Okay, do you see my presentation now? Yes. Yes. And you hear me? Oh. Very yes. well. We also see you. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, Kevin. Okay. So happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for attending my talk. Um, I'm Kevin Dreher, and uh, I want to talk about um, how to manage our design system. And I mainly want to talk about um, how to set up the teams and the processes around up uh, around that. So um, come on. Like, um, yeah, so um, I am a chapter lead for experience design at ProSieben Z1 Digital. ProSieben um, is like a ITV, if you're from the UK. Um, it's one of the biggest uh, private TV channels um, in Germany. And I work for ProSieben now for about two years. And um, we have an experience design team of about 10 designers. And maybe you have heard um, a talk yesterday from my colleague Flo, who talk about, talked about uh, naming conventions in uh, design systems. Uh, was a great talk. Um, so I hope you all attended or will watch the video. And yeah, um, I want to talk about our, our team setup and um, on where we are with our design system and um, where we want to. Um, oh, come on. So, and where we want to go in the future. Um, with it and how we want to set up our teams around our design system. Um, yeah, at ProSieben Z1 Digital, we develop multiple products, mostly re related to our TV shows. Um, for example, maybe you know The Mass Singer. We also have that on German TV here, or Big Brother, or Germany's Next Top Model. That's all ProSieben. Um, but I will, I will go a little bit into detail about that later. Oh man, nothing works here. Okay, so um, what is our current setup that we use? Um, basically, it's this. It looks chaotic. <laughs> um, we work in uh, overarching uh, chapters. Um, so we have a mobile chapter, backend, or UX design as a chapter. Um, so that's why I'm chapter lead. I think most of you will know that um, from the Spotify model. And representatives of each chapter make up the platform teams. So we have chapters for file or in Smart TV, et cetera. And um, yeah, most of our teams deliver to the user. So we have web, mobile, Smart TV, HVB TV, and we also have independent products. Um, and we also have fundamental products or teams. Um, for example, the player is in multiple products, the CMS team is in multiple products, and um, these teams always deliver to all the other platforms that deliver to the user. So not every product, every mobile app that we have needs to develop their own player. So I guess most of you that work in companies work in a setup similar to that. Um, so we have a, a big setup, a big, um, a a lot, a lot of teams. And with that many teams, um, we don't always have a designer in every team. So reviewing everything is a challenge and our UI or UX is not always um, the priority as it probably should be. Um, also over the last uh, two to three years, um, we had a massive growth in our product offerings. We offer seven media hubs one for every TV channel that ProSieben owns or ProSieben Z1. So we, I can name them, but it probably doesn't matter. Um, so all of these media hubs, apps, um, the users can watch live TV in them um, or catch up on missed episodes. And these media hubs are on six platforms. So iOS, Android, Huawei, web, smart TV, and HVB TV. And even though these hubs are mostly on maintenance, um, let's say a variety, uh, this variety of platforms really makes it hard to maintain them. And they're very old as well. So you have outdated legacy code um, that is inherited by an agency. Um, it is hard to um, develop new features on them. And over the last three years, uh, we launched three uh, new products um, of independent from our TV channels. Um, we have the uh, knowledge uh, base Galileo, uh, which is on web and app. Um, we have the podcast app Fio, um, which is great. And you should all check out. It's really cool. And um, we have the comedy video app Smile, 
And these work completely independent from everything else. And we have seven main fan worlds, as we call them. And um, these are um, our TV highlights, um, our digital extensions for our TV highlights. Um, and they need constant updating. They need to fit to the show. Um, and uh, yeah, they need a lot of maintenance. And for example, on the Must Singer, so users can vote uh, instead of the old telephone voting. It was a big step at Prozim. And we had similar experiences like that for Germany's Next Top Model, Promi Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother, uh, or The Voice of Germany. And these fan worlds were really the starting point uh, for us to build a scalable and stylable design system so we can support as many TV shows as possible if they want to work with us on this. So um, a quick timeline. At first, we launched our fan worlds in a very chaotic manner for Germany's Next Top Model two years ago, 2019. And things needed to be fast. And um, it was a test case. Nobody would know if it would take off. And the best thing was um, we had two other test cases in the pipeline um, with Big Brother and the Mass Singer shortly after. Um, but the thing that they don't tell you is with TV, you don't have a test case. Um, you fail or you will never fail again because you're out. Uh, if it doesn't work at uh, some point in the show, then um, nobody in the company will ever try something like that again. Um, and after that very stressful phase, we had our first try to get as a time design system uh, off the ground uh, in February 2020. Um, but our stakeholders wanted to prioritize other topics. So for some long months, um, our design team, us, looked um, for allies, allies <laughs> to get this off the ground and show our company that um, this is a worthwhile December, a uh, worthwhile endeavor. Oh my God, sorry. And um, in December, we got the okay to do it um, with one developer uh, to launch um, the mass singer in beta with the design system, um, while we still have the current fan world for the mass singer on air or live on in the app to try it out. And it's currently, um, as I said, in beta. So we designed this um, scalable and easy to style uh, design system. Here you can see it in Figma. Um, it's uh, really quite nice with Figma. Every, uh, with Figma, everything is set up with auto layout. Um, it's really great. We're all big fans of it. And uh, most components we can reuse from TV show to TV show. We don't need new video teasers for uh, every show. Um, and we can really focus on the core interactions that we want to change. And with the um, plug-in FEMA, we uh, change the style to fit to the um, show that we want to represent. So now. Basically, we are switching to Germany's next top model. Uh, it will get more obvious in a second. Come on. So yeah, not this, but this. Great. And now we have Germany's next top model. Um, and um, we have one developer who um, codes our components right now um, for web and app. As here, here you can see it in Storybook. Um, there are working components. It really works um, great for us right now. Um, you can see everything works nicely. Um, it's a great front end. But um, and now basically the mobile our mobile team is um, putting the plugs into it and uh, uses it. I just want to wait here for a second because we will also show a, a full template of the of the app. Um, get down. So yeah, we Storybook is really a powerful tool. If um, any of you guys don't uh, know it, I strongly recommend looking into it. Um, it really helps us as a single point of truth because you truly have the developed um, components in there. So yeah, this is then in the end, we have a template for one full page, which is quite cool. Um, but now we are facing the difficult questions. How can this grow beyond one person? Um, like we all know, uh, the challenges between design and development. <laughs> um, and we know that our developers have a variety of other topics um, that they need to solve. Um, so we really want to maintain quality. Um, really, um, we want that the design system will not become like a great chaotic. Um, uh, 
bunch of components, um, but that they are built well, built in a scalable way, as it is right now with our single developer, where we can really control and go uh, through it all with him. But that in the future, we, we will have that when um, it scales. So um, the problem is at Prozim, as we become of a more of a design educated company, let's say, the design system needs to spread organically across the company. Um, the knowledge about it needs to spread wide on how to use it. And this is not possible with a single, let's say, unicorn developer who codes our working components and um, supports the team with the implementation. And this is why we want to reorganize the teams with the design system in mind. And the teams need to scale to the company they work in, same as the design system should. So let's go through some possible setups that we looked at or that we have right now. So the first up is a solitary setup. Um, it's quite uh, easy. Uh, we have one person or team that provides um, a working component library um, that they probably created mainly for them first. This can be some enthusiastic designer who coded some components or as in our case, a single developer supported by us, the design team, um, led by us and with the vision of something greater, um, but also with their own use cases in mind first. And the benefits of that are easy. It's a great start. Um, and only one person or team has to give resources to the design system. Um, everyone else can concentrate on daily business. The drawbacks are the person or teams uh, or team, um, the person or team's needs will always be prioritized over all the other team's needs. And in the end, other teams might start to work on their own design system, own front end stuff, own components. Um, so it's hard to really establish this as a, um, as a company wide design system if other uh, teams start to work on that. Also, um, one big drawback that we also see is um, as the design system becomes more mature, more implemented, bugs will increase. And one developer cannot handle that. And for maintenance, we need more dedication and really plan in time to fix bugs and spread the knowledge and not just create components. You really need to get out there, um, work with other people and also be ready to, um, yeah, to, to do QA and fix the bugs. And to be clear, the problem here is not only the developer that creates those components, but also the teams that have to implement them and the lack of communication between them. There's only so much time in a day and one person or one team um, that creates components for probably themselves um, cannot handle this uh, besides the day-to-day. -day. It's just uh, 24 hours uh, in the day and we also need to sleep. Or drink, Mate. Um, so yeah, solitary setups uh, do not scale. It's great for one team, but it's not as great for company-wide usage, at least for us. So the next one would be a centralized set setup. Um, so centralized setups, quite easy to explain. You have a dedicated team that build components um, for all the other teams. Um, they might uh, develop. They might have developed these components for themselves, um, by themselves, um, or they're taking over for an external agency that have, that developed the um, design system. And the benefits are that they can create components for all teams equally, and they don't uh, play favorites. Basically, they are better equipped to identify needs of the uh, teams and the overall company. Something that is hard to do in a solitary setup, and they are a lot better equipped um, to document everything because they are their own team with their own setup. But I will get into, doc into uh, documentation in a second. And they're uh, in a good uh, position to create processes to validate the designs and lead this from a single point, which is also quite important in the design system that you validate the components, validate the designs. And of course, one of the main things um, that I brought up earlier it's easier to control the quality of their output. It's easier to review because you have a single points, point. But the drawbacks are um, your components should always be based on an actual platform uh, needs and constraints. And this is hard to do as a centralized team because there is missing visibility from them on the daily business because they don't work in the daily business. They're their own team working for all the other teams. And um, yeah, it can be hard because of stuff like that also to manage between 
Design System Teams Designer and the actual product designers. At least sometimes it can be. And also this setup is um, hard to do if um, you uh, are not doing cross-platform design team. Like if, you, um, if your uh, components should be native to the platform, um, it's hard with a centralized team because um, if you, you have to develop for iOS, you have to develop for um, Android, you have to develop for web, um, it's hard to get all of these um, uh, developers into the centralized team. So it only works really well in a cross-platform design system. So it scales, but sadly misses day-to-day -day context, I would say. And about the documentation, um, really the more you can document on how to build things the right way and contribute to the system in the right way, less questions will come up. Um, and in the end, it will mean more productive time for the developers, which is of course, of course what you want. And um, documentation can be easily shared. And that leads um, to more spread and more spread of knowledge from the design system. And of course, documentation is always better to have than not to have at all. Um, also because um, questions, questions will come up with the design test system if you want to spread it across teams. The more people use your system, the more um, questions on how to use it will come up. Um, also more people will not just ask questions, but question on why stuff is built in a certain way. And while we want to foster discussion, um, it is important to have a unified design system, which means people must accept the system as it is and not nitpick around, follow the rules. Otherwise you will not, never get somewhere, like if everyone says, why didn't we build it that way? Why is this built in this way? At some point it needs to be accepted and you cannot be that every time something is questioned. So you should have strong arguments for the design decisions as well as the code decisions. So the next system setup would be uh, federated. Sorry. Um, which basically means that people from different teams come together over a period of time to form the design system team. And the benefit is that you have um, representatives, uh, representatives of every team and they know the needs of other teams in the company. So the team really has insights into the platform needs and decisions get made collectively. Also means that it's easier to spread the design system across all teams as well as the knowledge because you have people coming in and out from product teams. Um, yeah, but the drawbacks are you have a lot of indirect stakeholders. Every platform team um, has a stakeholder. And if you say, I want some, uh, some developer wants to spend some time in that other team, build some components, often it can be hard to get the time from the developer. That also means that it is hard to create that team with that many indirect stakeholders in the design system team, as well as like product visions between product teams can clash if they're brought together in a design system in this way. That could also be a benefit because it shows problem that your company might have already. That's how I like to look at it. At least it can really show uh, problems in the company and hopefully can lead to solutions in that. Also, um, you have challenges in documentation with no set team because every team has their own, set, uh, own documentation. Probably like if you have like your classic scrum teams then every team can decide how to document something for themselves, sometimes better, sometimes worse. So you don't have um, set rules for documentation, especially if people go in and out. So that is gonna be a challenge on this. And sometimes you have varying levels of quality from the developers, especially in the beginning, um, when they don't know yet how to um, really build right in the design system. Um, and if you switch out people, you will have that varying levels of quality. Um, but when people go back full-time into their own teams, they take the knowledge from the design system team into their own team and they will help to spread the knowledge and usage across the company. So what will we do? Um, we want to start in a centralized setup, basically what we have now with our unicorn and take the benefits from the federalized setup to really grow into that. So in the end, hopefully we have experts in all the teams on the design system and how to 
um, use it in the right way. And the centralized team or unicorn can help in bottleneck situations, which will also mean it is hopefully easier to um, talk to uh, stakeholders and get the time from other developers. Because, hey, if, you, if, you, if the developer really, really is needed that, that badly on that product team, we have the centralized team. So please give it this developer's time. And if you really need it, you can go back and uh, we can build the design system stuff. Um, so that makes it easier to actually get that time from developers. And also if we have that um, centralized unicorn, um, the documentation and ownership will always be centralized, which is one of the bigger challenges of a federalized setup um, that still something is owned by some, some, uh, someone in this way. Um, but we have challenges. Um, that we currently face in our company. So not every developer no actually knows what our design system is or how to contribute to it. Um, so documentation and support is really needed on that. As I just said, stakeholders don't always want to prioritize the design system. So it is very important to push for it, especially in big bureaucratic German companies to show the return of investment of it. In the end, the design system makes it easier um, makes it cheaper to develop, um, it's better for the user, et cetera, et cetera. I don't need to uh, preach to the choir, um, but we, we have problems uh, convincing our stakeholders in that way. And um, we really have to make that return of investment argument with them. And also it's hard um, for our developers sometimes um, to really follow that systematic engineering approach, build atomic components. Um, a lot of times they, they go back to throwaway solutions, which we really want to avoid. Um, so again, documentation and um, over time to show to them that this is so much easier and uh, so much better in the long run. And you can uh, plug and play basically, and you don't need to build these throwaway solutions because at some point they will actually become the um, worse and um, more time intensive solution than a design system. Um, and we really need to motivate our developers with that because they don't see it and they think, why are we forced to build stuff in a design system way when we can just um, build however we like it. Um, so with a federalized system where people come in and out and you exchange the knowledge on why the design system is a great uh, endeavor, we hope to motivate the developers and really um, show them why this is great, why we all should work together and live in peace and harmony. Um, so yeah, this is what we will try um, and see what will break. Um, and for big corporations, for us, this is our best way to build and manage a design system right now. But of course, this is our experience. I'm, I'm very happy to hear uh, all your experiences because uh, so far, um, everything I could take from this conference was really great. So I'm very excited. Um, let's, let's see what the future brings. Um, some recommended reading. Um, these two articles by Nathan Curtis were really big inspiration for us um, to try to go for this model in the future. Um, or of course, you can just follow Sylvia on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, it's always a great resource for me, at least. Um, you can screenshot that right now if you want, if you're interested. Otherwise, I can also share these slides later. So thank you. If we wait 30 seconds, we finish just in time very German. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or hit me up uh, on LinkedIn or per mail. Um, also, last thing, um, if you really want to work at ProSieben, we are hiring. Um, we don't have the jobs out yet, but if you're really interested, you can uh, uh, hit me up. I can connect you <laughs> and I will also post this later in the job channel. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Cool. Amazing. Thank you. I need to, I need to quickly uh, share something here. Yeah, please. <laughs> Do you remember, Kevin? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so this was four, four years ago where you gave yeah. a talk with Kadir. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot there was a video. <laughs> oh yes, oh, yeah. there's a video. So basically we had our in-person meetups and I had the idea to vlog. <laughs> But I did just one blog because, yeah. I was, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I was just too shy. <laughs> oh, God. That's yeah. really funny. Okay, I will stop it. <laughs> <laughs> cool stuff. 
uh yeah it's a lot of information as well right how to yeah. make sense of it all yeah it's more for like managing um but i guess also as designers we we kind of need to push for that that's at least how how we experienced it experienced it when we push for the design system and now that we are like um want to further it and uh, further set um spread it across the company uh, it's quite important for us right now yeah, and it's uh, really interesting as well that it's uh, quite recent, the design system that you guys have. Uh, yeah. It was just fab last year, and you're already so far into processes and uh, communication. Yeah, that, on one side, that's good. On the other side, I guess it's a curse as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, we can start off with uh, some questions. Uh, I see that more people are as uh, adding questions as we go along. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can elaborate as much as you want in each one of these. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to apply the Scrum Nexus model to multiple design system teams? Um, uh, Scrum Nexus is not really something I'm familiar with. Um, so a bit hard to uh, answer for me. Um, can someone maybe elaborate quickly on the Scrum Nexus? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually not familiar <laughs> with it either. Um, I heard it, but I'd, I'm not quite sure, uh, right now sure. So let's see if the person then can uh, just expand uh, either on the um, on Slack or here in this question itself, uh, feel free. In the meantime, I'll just uh, go on to um, answer or like um, read the one from Laura here in the Q&A inside our Zoom. So any advice for an unicorn that is trying to push this topic within the design system first? We don't even have um, the dev unicorn yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, get as many. Um allies or stakeholders on board as possible. Like I think it's important to uh, involve as many people as early as possible, motivate them, uh, make them really want to work on the design system and um, get other people uh, to work with you as, um, as soon as possible. I think that will help in the long run to really make this a long lasting design system. Cool. Uh, and yes, we have uh, somebody that raised a hand here in the call. So Otto, I'm going to allow you to talk and you can ask your question to Kevin. You can unmute yourself and then just um, go ahead. Let's see if Otto is around. Or maybe he raised his hand accidentally. Yara wants to ask something. Yeah, go for it. Hey, Kevin, awesome Hi. talk. Incredible, uh, incredible stuff. So my question is, when you're looking at this type of scale where you want to uh, have people adopt the system and all that, um, how do you ensure that people are really doing it? Do we have any, some sort of quality assurance gates processes in place? Could you maybe just elaborate a bit more on that topic? Yeah. Um, so right now we mostly have, um, we mostly implement it in teams with designers that are familiar with the design system. So they QA it on the um, product uh, team basis. Um, but we also have uh, weeklies with the um, teams that build the design system and we hope that this will grow into like also a review session that we will have um, review of components of um, working components in the product in these weeklies and where we, that we QA them there. Otherwise QA um, should really work on the component level. So in the design system team where they are built that we QA these components there and um, really see that they work. And hopefully then <laughs> the setup will be so great that on the product they will just work and we don't need to look at them every time. Mm -hmm. okay this will over time this will um, like in the beginning we will have to but over time it should pro uh, hopefully work in a way we don't have to review every single bit mm -hmm. maybe just a follow-up question if this would be possible yeah <laughs> so, of course, I think so. uh, do you see some sort of overlap and quality assuring or checking from a design perspective ux perspective uh, your products so they are in line with the design system but also in general so they are user centered in a way that just, you know, complies with some heuristics and all that. Are those two separate things to you? No, no, no. Um, they like somehow belong to get, they belong together. Or how do you think about that? I think they belong together. Definitely. Like we don't develop the design system in a vacuum. 
Um, so we, we developed these fan worlds in a very user-centric manner and the de design system was developed out of that. So it was always developed with our, with our team needs um, in mind, which are also the, in the end, which um, are what we need to serve the user. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very user-centric design system. I, I hope I can say that. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Sure. I see that uh, Otto is uh, back on the call and connecting the audio. Um, so, well, when the audio from Otto comes back, I will, in the meantime, ask you another question. Mm -hmm. So how many designers and developers were needed for the first release of the design system? Um, two, like one designer, one developer. Wow. Um, Flo, who had to talk yesterday, um, was the main guy who built all these components. And we have uh, one developer who um, builds these components as I uh, just showed them. Of course, in the end, we all work together on it. And, um, but those two guys were the main guys that work on this. And um, I think that was also what was needed in the beginning to um, get stakeholders on board to show, hey, it's quick, it's easy, and we can implement it and it's great. And if I can share some gossip, like we also developed these components like three times at least. We now do, right now we do them for web and app, which is gonna be a challenge in the future because um, we don't have the same technology there. And we want to converge this, at least from a design uh, perspective. Um, but we also had, if Flo is here, he can jump in. Uh, but we had like two other versions based on a different technical basis. So, um, and the developer we have is really great and he was able to quickly build these components up from scratch. Oh, all right. Otto, are you around? I don't hear his mic, so maybe no. having some issues. All right, <clears throat> so let's go on then to the next question and jump in anytime, Otto, if you uh, manage to, to get connected. So we are also building a new UI library along with um, Storybook. We also have a very complex product there we have a UI library with core elements and unique elements for each product. I would be very interested in your structuring, structuring in storybook. Is there any way you can share the structure with us? Thanks for the keynote, great insights. Um, yeah, I think I can share the uh, structure. I, I, will, I can share it later. Like I don't think I can just show it here now, but um, I think I can, I can share some stuff later on, yeah. No problem. And uh, also somebody else uh, commented that uh, whoever asked this question, they have the same problems, uh, they are not alone. So yeah, it's, it's a, a common struggle. And uh, do you have any recommendations on how to persuade developers that a design system is a good thing also for them? Um, that is a good question. And uh, it is a challenge for us as well, but really um, to basically to show them we were in a very, um, as I said, we have a great developer who built these working components. So it was easy for us because we can show, hey, you can see um, it's already working. You just need to implement it and it will make your life easier. Um, and I think that is really something like the scalability of the system. And um, if you have a cross-platform uh, design system that um, you can use the same components over all platforms, which will make it easier um, for all teams. And I think that is an um, argument that a lot of developers can get on board with, um, that you really um, save uh, work, save them work, save them trouble. At least that's how I try it, or we try it. Cool. And you told us it took nearly a year to get allies. What exactly broke the ice? Um, some new uh, perspectives. Um, from new people, I would say, um, as well as um, that these test cases we did in the beginning for these TV shows paid off. So it was, um, we, for this year, um, we want a lot more of that, let's say it like that. Um, so we need a way to scale quickly and to um, build more stuff uh, quicker, better, more reliable um, on the quick. Uh, and that was the, um, the way where we could uh, push for that. So, hey, look, our developers don't need to develop everything again and again and again, but can we use these components and they're stylable, they're scalable, um, it's a great way to build this cross-platform, etc. Um, and 
this was the way where we can um, uh, like talk to our stakeholders and break the ice. Cool. I think scalability is one of the biggest arguments for design systems like big corporations. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so Otto, is your microphone on now? I see that there is like a mic option there. So the audio is connected. Or yeah, maybe he's just struggling with Zoom. Uh, hit me up on Slack, otherwise if yeah, if it's <laughs> it might be working. easier. <laughs> or just uh, type your question as well. Okay, so um, how do you deal with the federated members? Do they contribute to the design system on behalf of their project needs, or do they join for a set of amount of time to work on your design system backlog? Um, the first thing. Uh, at, this, at the beginning, late letter thing um, in the end. So yeah, at first they will work on the um, on the stuff that is relevant uh, relevant to their day to day, um, and we will have our developer help them, support them. But then we slowly want to face this to hey, don't you want to come into our team, into the centralized team, basically, and work a bit more um, on the design system for a longer time? Um, that's how we want to face this basically, and this is how we want to build that team in the long run. And uh, following up on this question, because I'm quite interested in that, <laughs> the, does do you get uh, actually people that are interested in jumping in? Or, yes. I have, yes. Oh, you do. Great. Yeah, like not not always, um, but some, and uh, we really need to motivate those developers to motivate even more and to spread spread the knowledge and the motivation in their team. Um, yeah, and these are really the the people you want to keep around. I want you. Yeah, because I find that the struggle, right? Um, yeah. People are just like, nah, I'm all right, <laughs> kind of thing. We know that, we have that. We are happy to have some developers who, who are really good there and want to work with us on this um, as a team. Um, yeah, and we, we hope together we can really push for the design system in total. Cool. Um, is there a concern from product teams that the members are spending time on design system tasks versus product sprint work? Um, yes, sometimes there is. And um, what we also try is to bring our um, architect in who is full, fully on board with um, our design system. Maybe I should have also mentioned that uh, earlier um, to, to try to push for the right solution. Um, that's also often an argument we use in that case, um, like because design system component to build that will just take a few days more, maybe one week more. How important is it to build the throwaway solution quicker um, if we have to build a component later anyway? Um, so that's how we try to, to work in these situations. Cool. And what would be your approach slash advice on creating a design system for the first time? knowing that the company has already a live product in place. And um, so, yeah, for example, dealing with legacy components and a small team. Um, I would try, like if you're really trying for the first time, um, maybe don't do a full design system team at the beginning. Um, see what's up next, or we need to do a new landing page, a new um, checkout, whatever, and try to build this in the right way. Like get some developer um, who's, who knows design systems or um, do it yourself and try to work with the developers that work on this one feature for the future, um, like, like, like a checkout and try to build that checkout in the right way. And that will give you a starting point um, to uh, spread span this out to um, build more components in the future. But I think it's, if you really have a hard time with stakeholders in this sense, um, in that context, then um, don't try to push for the design system team right now, but really um, bring it into the day to day and evolve it over time. And then to, at some point, if, if everyone's more confident in, this, in, the, in it, um, try to build a team out of it. Very interesting. There is a, a related question to this. Um, so how did you adopt the new design system in existing products and legacy code base? Uh, did you refactor it? And if yes, uh, how did you make it a priority? Um, as I said, we could make it a priority um, because scalability was a major concern. Um, and we, this is a bit of a technical question, um, so I, I might not answer it in the correct way, but I think we had to um, 
build like a new part in the app that we basically insert and um, that the design system components can be used. Cool. So let's see. Um, how does your system deal with a split service that use completely different frameworks, if any, for the same components? Um, right now, like in the future, we want to converge. Right now, we develop different components, one for mobile, one for web. Um, it's not ideal. and We can do this because we have a really great developer. In the future, we want to bring this together um, with like probably web sockets or some technology or React. Um, but there's a very technical question um, that we that I think also determine like um, you need to see on company to company basis what is really needed. Yeah. Um, I guess from my experience on that uh, aspect, we uh, have the same design system, but uh, for web and uh, mobile technologies. And of course, then when it comes to mobile, then we create stuff that is uh, native uh, to to the app or to the platforms. And I guess, yeah, the way we try to handle this is um, the UX is the source of truth. So whatever we have in UX assets, it should be like how the component should look like and then how it's done on the background, then it's up to the technology um, to, to handle it. I mean, that's a better answer than mine. That's basically how we do it right now as well. Uh, but we hope at some point that we can kill this redundance of trying to uh, building the um, components two times. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially if you can think of it as it being like a um, shell and then you can just use that shell anyway, right? Uh, yeah. React, Angular, whatever. Cool. And uh, how do you balance the creation of design system with the UX? How do you have time to create from zero the whole UX or just redesigning the components? Um, so as I said earlier, um, we really uh, develop this out of uh, user needs and to build components um, after we um, build um, these first fan worlds. And starting with the system and with the library, which basically is the start of a design system, um, made it easier for us to work in that as well and trying to build that setup to build uh, themable solutions in, in Sketch and then Figma um, made us quicker as well. So we never saw it like a trade-off. It was also was always um, this will support our, UI, our UX and we would never do it just for the sake of doing it. It always comes out of user centricity and out of the need for a good UX that, that scales across multiple platforms about multiple um, TV shows in our case. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. No, I think it does, it definitely does. Um... And how do you manage new contributions in terms of quality assurance before release? Um, we test it before release. Like we, so right now we test it in the product, in the app, in the beta. Um, but the components also get code reviewed by the um, developer who is currently building the components. Cool. <laughs> there is a, also a funny uh, comment in, in the box, like, can it get any more complex? Just wow. <laughs> and I think they're referring to yeah the, the initial slides that you were presenting. Um, so as you were in a big company, did you ever come to a point where development was not able to use the system due to technical differences? And, or do you have the fear that will happen in the future? Um, yes, we have products where it will get more um, complicated, where we also don't have a plan currently. We need to see also what is the um, product roadmap in the future, for example, like HBB TV. Um, I don't know if anyone knows that here, but it's basically um, what's the English word for teletext? Um, yeah, actually, they use yeah, the same word yeah. in Dutch, teletext. <laughs> okay. uh, subtitles. Uh, uh, the thing that you have on your TV, the text that you have on your TV, is basically it's HTML websites on your TV and we support that. We have a product for that, which is actually quite cool. Like it's a smart TV interface that lives right on your TV. Um, and at some point we really want to put the um, uh, design system on it um, without developing the components again for this. So we hope we can use the same components in HBB TV as well, which is a techno techno um, technologically very difficult platform. So we definitely have plot, uh, products where we ha will have problems in the future. Actually, uh, Diego just uh, mentioned in the chat, it's uh, captions. That's a word okay. in English. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, we are at the top of the hour and uh, I'm sure more uh, questions will come around uh, your way. If not, uh, yeah, in the uh, mirror board for sure. And whatever you can share with us, if you can post it in the mirror board, that'd be mm -hmm. lovely. And once again, thank you. It was really insightful and uh, very nice to see. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, see you at the next event. Hopefully you will give another talk soon. <laughs> I will Hopefully. reach out. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Have a nice Thank evening. You. Enjoy.